Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College Denver, and this is our video lecture over section 8.4, which covers compound interest. Now, this is a far more important section than 8.3 because most loans and investments uh, compute interest using a, a compounding idea. So the interest is accrued on the current balance of the loan or the current balance of the investment, not just the original investment, which is what simple interest is about. So um, let's take a look at compound interest. So we're going to use compound interest formulas, calculate present value, and understand effective annual yield. We'll cover all this stuff here. So compound interest is interest computed on the original principal as well as any accumulated interest. So it's kind of like a, an exponential growth. It grows on the growth that's already growing. Um, to calculate the compound interest paid once a year, we use the formula A equals the uh, A standard for the future amount equals the principal times one plus the rate time or to the power of time, where A is called the account's future value, the principal P is called the present value, and R is the rate as a decimal, and T is the number of years. So we'll look at this formula, but we're actually going to modify it a little bit in the next example and primarily use that formula. So it says, uh, let's say you deposit 2000 into a savings account at Hometown Bank, which has a rate of 6%. Find the amount of money at, in the account after three years subject to compound interest. So what we could do to answer part A is take 6% of 2,000 and add it on. And uh, let's take a look at that. 6% of 2,000. So 0 0.06 times 2,000 gives us 120. So then we would have $2,120. Then if we take 6% of that, this is the compounding part, now we're taking interest of stuff that we've already gained, then we would, in the second year, we would get $127. So in the first year we get $120, and the second year we get $127 interest. Mm -hmm. Remember under simple interest from the last section we would just get $120 each time. So this is a little bit more complicated. So now we have $2,120 plus one hundred and twenty seven dollars and twenty cents and for the third year we would take that amount times six percent again we would get hundred and thirty four dollars interest and add that on to the two thousand two hundred and forty seven that we had and twenty cents from at the end of the second year and at the end we would have twenty three eighty two and three cents but this formula is actually uh, the, that we're about to use in the example We'll get this 23.82 and 3 cents a lot quicker instead of doing each year step by step. So let's go here. So it says the principal is 2,000, the rate is 6%, and the time is 3. So if we plug this into the formula, and I'll show you this on the calculator, we'll get the 23.82 and 3 cents. So here's the calculator. If we did this in one step, so we did 2,000 times 1 plus point, oops, sorry, point 0.06 to the third power. Gives us 23.82 and three cents. It's a lot quicker, it's a lot better to use that formula. So that's how they got that. And if you get, you know, if you have a graphing calculator like I show in my, uh, like I have on my computer, or a TI-30X2S, you'll be able to plug that all in one line with the parentheses and see that entire formula. So net rounded to the nearest cent, the future value is 23.82. So if we wanted to figure out the Interest that we gained, it would really just be the future value, 2382 minus the 2000 that we started with, and the interest at, that we would make after three years is $382.03. That's be part B is pretty easy. It's just what we gained. But most of the times we actually compound interest and it pays more than once a year. Usually it's monthly, but sometimes we'll see quarterly or daily or something like that. So we have a very similar formula to what we had before this formula here, but this is the main one we're going to look at, and this is the one I give you in a formula sheet. So this is still the future amount equals the principal starting amount times 1 plus the rate divided by n, where n is the number of compoundings per year, and then we take that to the power of n times t. So everything's the same except for we have this n. n is the number of times the interest is compounded per year. Um, so usually we'll see monthly, but sometimes we'll see quarterly. So if it was monthly, n would be 12. If it was quarterly, n would be 4. Um, if it was daily, n would be 365. So let's look at this example. It says, 
You deposit $7,500 into a savings account that has a rate of 6%. The interest is compounded monthly. How much money will you have after five years? Well, we got to plug this all into the formula. And the big thing is, is when I do this power down here, this 12 times 5, if I don't put parentheses around it like it's shown in the formula, then uh, the calculator could mess this up. So either put parentheses around your exponent or just figure out what the exponent will be like they did here before you type it in. So I'm going to show you uh, how they type this in. This is the initial formula with all the numbers in there. 7,500 is what we're investing. The rate is 6%. We're compounding monthly and it's over five years. So we're doing monthly for five years. That means 60 compounding periods. So if I want to type this in, I would just go 7,500 parenthesis 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. That's the new element here and the parenthesis to the, and you can put parentheses for the power and do five times 12. Um, I'll do it like that, five times 12, but you need parentheses for this exponent because if you don't uh, do that, it'll mess it up. So that should give us $10,116. And if we round to the nearest cent, it'll be 38 cents. Let's double check to see that's what they got, 10,116 and 38 cents. If you figure out the interest, it's just what we gained, the $10,116.38 minus what we invested, $7,500. And when you subtract those two numbers, you get $26,16.38. So we gained $2,616.38 over the five years. Sometimes banks use what's called continuous compounding, where the compounding periods increase indefinitely. Uh, you'll probably see this more on a loan, but it says after t, uh, if we use uh, continuous compounding, then we have a different formula, and this will always this will also be given in your formula sheet. Where e, I know you see e here, but e is just a number, okay? And we'll be able to type that in. So either we're doing n compoundings per year, or we're doing continuous compounding. So there's two different formulas. So let's say we were going to use this. Uh, said. The, the, we have two different choices here. We have to invest 8,000 in six years, and you have a choice between two accounts. The first pays 7% per year, compounded monthly, and the other one pays a little lower interest rate, but it's compounded continuously. So which is better? So if we plug in the 8,000, the six years, and the 7%, and the monthly into the compound interest formula, we'll get 12,160. Let me type that in. Let me look at the rates again. 8,000, 7%, six years, monthly. Okay. So 8,000 times 1 plus 0 0.07. Let me double check that again. If that's the rate. Yeah, 7%, six years. Okay. Divided by 12 because it's monthly to the six years times monthly compoundings should give us. Twelve thousand one hundred sixty and eighty-four cents. Okay, that's what they get there. Now the continuous compounding. So I'm going to show you how to plug this in. The big thing is, is you've got to find this this number e in your calculator, uh, and then we'll type in the power. So, uh, and that one was what was the interest rate? Six point eight five percent. Okay. So to do that one, we're going to take our eight thousand. All right, and we're going to do times, and all both calculators, the TI-83 or 84, or the TI-30X2S, to find this E, you press second, and then the LN button, and that's the way to do it for both calculators, second, and the LN button, it'll give us E to the power of, and I believe the interest rate was 0 0.0675, and how many years was it again? Uh, six years. Oh, 685, oh, geez, okay, 685, so... Uh, times six years. Is that right? Six years? Yeah, okay. And that's how you would type that in. 12,066 and 60 cents. So which one's better? The one where you get more money, 12,160 and 84 cents. Okay, but the big thing here that I'm showing you is how to get this E in your calculator. Remember, to get the E, you press your, you press second, LN, and that gives you the E for the continuous compounding formula. Okay, sorry, I got a little lost there. All right, so now let's say we want to calculate present value. So let's say you know that you want, say, uh, to have $5,000 for a down payment on a car in two years or something like that, and you want to know how much you need to invest now 
That's what this formula is for. So if you know what you need, want to have in the future and you need to know how to much invest now, then this formula is solved for the principal and we just take the future amount and divide by this one plus r divided by n to the n times t. So it said, how much money should you be depositing into an account today that earns 6% compounded monthly so it'll accumulate to 20,000 in five years? So 20,000 is the future amount, the interest rate is six, monthly is 12, and the interest rate is five years. I'll show you how I can type this all in one line uh, in the calculator. So 20,000 divided by one plus 0 0.06, to the, oh, I forgot to do the divide by 12. So divided by 12 to the five times 12. 14,827 dollars and 44 cents. And that's what we get here. So approximately you would need to invest 14,827 dollars and 45 cents. Now that might not seem like it makes much, you know, it might not seem very viable that you know, if you want to save for 20000 in five years, you might not have $14,827 right now. So that's what we're going to cover in the next section when we look at making a savings plan where you make regularly scheduled deposits of, say, 100 or $50, and then hopefully it'll grow a lot quicker. So this is just showing the formula. The last thing we want to cover in this section is the effective annual yield. The point of this part here is to show you that the number of, uh, when you, when you do compound interest and you compound a certain number of times per year, the more compoundings per year, the more interest that you're going to accrue over that period of time. So that's a big thing here. So more compoundings generally means more interest. Now remember, interest can be good if you're investing, but interest is bad when you're paying a loan. So just keep that in mind. So this part, we'll look at the yield, the actual percentage interest that you're getting versus the effective rate. So let's say, uh, it doesn't give the formula. Oh, this is an example here. Um, oh, sorry, I messed that up here. So effective annual yield, okay. What we'll do is say, you deposit 4,000 into an account that pays 8% interest compounded monthly. Find the future value after one year. Use the future value formula for simple interest to determine the effective annual yield. So. We use the compound interest formula to find the account's future value after one year, uh, which is 43.32. Now, the percent increase, really, is just the increase. Remember, we did this in, in 8.1. You figure out the increase from 4,000 to 43.32. So that's the interest, 30, uh, $332. That's the interest divided by the original amount. Don't worry about all this equation here really it's just the interest that you gain divided by the original amount as a percentage 8.3 percent yield now if you look back we're paying 8 percent interest compounded monthly but uh, it pays 8 percent interest but it's compounded monthly so actually since it's compounded monthly you get more than 8 percent uh, interest at the end of the year you actually get 8.3 percent because you get 332 dollars interest so let me go over this again sorry when, you, when you're figuring out the effective annual yield, you figure out your future value after one year, one year, you figure out the interest, which is just $332. They're showing this, making this look a little harder, but it's just $332. You divide by the original amount, convert that to a percent, and that's the effective annual yield. So that's it. Good luck. We'll see you next time.